Throwback Thursday, YouTube friends and family. And I hope you all are getting ready for however you celebrate Easter or if you celebrate Easter. You know, being um, so far away from my son and it being prayer to a work day, I'm probably going to have my own Easter, but you know what? That's okay. So in honor of today's sort of throwback Thursday video, I am wearing my peeps shirt. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, I've been obsessed with peeps my entire life. I just, I love marshmallows. It's like the perfect food, right? <laughs> Super bad for you, right? So I thought I would talk a little bit. Guys, I'm going to use my iPad instead of writing out talking notes. I'm going to talk a little bit about peeps and then I'm going to show you why. So peeps are made of marshmallows. They've been around since 1953 in U.S. and Canada, and they primarily come in chicks, bunnies, and there are, I guess, some other animals. I've only seen chicks and bunnies. And then they have the holiday shapes. The company that produces them is called Just Born, and uh, it's in Pennsylvania. It's called Just Born Quality Confections. So originally, peeps were an Easter item, but then, as you know, there are Valentine's peeps, there are Christmas peeps, there's all sorts, I said Valentine's, um, Christmas peeps, I'm sorry. So actually peeps have been available year round since 2014. Mm. Not diabetes friendly, I might add. So what is in a peep? All the things that are not good if you worry about your blood sugar, uh, sugar, corn syrup, gelatin, food dyes, and salt. So no nutritional value <laughs> and corn syrup largely today is genetically modified. It was founded, the Just Born Company was founded in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania by an immigrant um, that's, it was Russian Empire at that time, now it's the Ukraine and um, his name is San, Sam Born and unfortunately he passed away in 1959. But that's okay. His son um, decided, you know, there's got to be a more efficient way to make these peeps because y'all, they were handmade. I wish I would have had a handmade peep. And I didn't because I didn't come along till 1961. But they acquired in 1953 the Rada Can Candy Company and its marshmallow line. So the son, Bob Bourne, <laughs> um, decided, well, I'm going to play off my last name. And he put up a sign that advertised Just Born Confections. And these were the peeps. And it was soon the largest ma marshmallow manufacturer in the world. So let me see what else I can tell you. There are contests and competitions around peeps, which I won't be entering. <laughs> I had no idea. A Peeps contest is held each year at the National Harbor in front of the Peeps Company Store. <laughs> okay, this is Wikipedia, guys. The 2017 winner, Matt Stoney of California, ate 255 Peeps in five minutes. I, I, I don't think my stomach would hold 255 Peeps. So that's just a few interesting facts about Peeps. So what I want to share with you first before we get into doing a little cooking and baking. And y'all, I know my cat's asleep on the counter. Oh, you got to pick your battles. At least he's asleep because earlier he wasn't and he was into everything while I was trying to clean. So I'll re-clean that spot. So I wanted to share with you a couple things that I got for my birthday. Um, not because I want to be like, look at what I have. It's not like that at all, but they're very helpful things. And my son is a wonderful gift giver. He is one of those people that listens all year long and watches. And he's always trying to buy me things that, <laughs> that make my life easier. I don't mean to laugh, y'all. Um, as y'all know, I have an under-the-counter mounted jar opener, which is like the best gift he ever got me. And that was right after I first got lupus and I couldn't squeeze or anything. And yeah, I know my hands look red, guys. Just pretend they don't. They feel much better. So 
that year he said, well, maybe for your birthday, that was for Christmas, maybe for your birthday I can get you a matching walker. So he teases me because he knows I do have trouble with my hands. So before we get into what Ben sent me, I want to tell y'all, this is the cookbook that I mentioned that one of you subscribers sent me. And if you enclosed, you know how Amazon, you can enclose a message because I believe, well, it is on Amazon. I'll say it that way. But it came from a private address, but it could have been a private seller. I'm not sure. But it's Mountain Makins in the Smokies, a cookbook. And it was printed in 1957 by the Great Smoky Mountains Natural History Association. So it has breads, cake, candy, cookies, cereal and mush, drinks, dumplings, fish, fruits, gravy, ground talk. We'll skip that chapter. Gruel, jam, muffins, pancakes, pies, puddings, remedies. Ooh, remedies. Salad dressing, stuffing, vegetables, and yeast. And you can get a copy by mail for a dollar post paid. <laughs> so this this is a wonderful, wonderful gift. I'm very excited because y'all know I love cornbread and there are a lot of corn pone, which is just, you know, a big skillet of cornbread recipes in there that are different than what I've used in the past. So to whoever sent me that, I thank you sincerely. So my son always tries to find peeps that he thinks I've not tried because y'all, there are hot tamale cheap, cheeps. Well, they could be cheeps, peeps. Um, hot chocolate. There are so many flavors. They even have um, Dr. Pepper flavored ones. But these are the Marshmallow Sparkly Wild Berry. <laughs> so um, there's only six of them, so I'm not too worried. I'm not going to eat six at once. Or I might. <laughs> So that was in honor of my love of peeps. Let me just get the peeps stuff out of the way. I'm hoping to do this maybe in a short or maybe in a live, I don't know. So he saw this and I'm like, this is so amazing. So it is the peeps chicken coop kit. It includes five peeps, pre-mixed white and yellow icing, assorted candy, pre-baked sugar cookie panels, and four chicken cookies. So that is so adorable and I figure it could go on for spring it doesn't have to just be for Easter so you'll be seeing this again so that I know that's not real home study but y'all I really needed a good knife that I can have outside when I need to <laughs> pardon me um you know cut twine off of a bale of hay or there's a million things, open a box. I never have anything and it's disaster on fingernails, which y'all, these are my real fingernails, but usually once like out in the dirt season starts, I just cut them because otherwise they, they don't look very nice. So my son got me a really nice knife and he has one that's similar, I think same brand. It's made by Sin Cut, and it has the belt clip, which is super handy for me. And I'm still getting used to this, but it's a, it's a nice big knife and it has a push button thing that you can use to release it. I, not like a switchblade exactly, but the first thing my son said was, don't cut yourself. <laughs> so, so far I haven't cut myself, but I'm super tickled with it. Came with a little cleaning cloth that came in a nice little pack it if you want to keep it handy and you don't want it just rolling around in a drawer and getting um scratched up so at christmas i had said something like he was cutting open things for me like presents right and i'm like man i need a knife i said it totally in passing and i never pursued it so he listened another thing for you all who might have rain barrels one of my dilemmas is I don't have enough slope from the rain barrel to the garden and I'm not cutting another hole in my downspout um, to gravity feed like a sprinkler or anything like that. So when I use water out of my water bar barrel and I have a 50 gallon, unfortunately I have to hand carry five gallon buckets and it's very hard on my hands. It's hard on my back. It's inconvenient, but I would like to use 
the rainwater because I feel like it's better for my garden. So my son got me an Italian made utility and drainage pump. It's 3000 horsepower and you can use it for all sorts of things like to drain a pool or to keep circulating water, you know, in a fountain, that type thing. So I don't know, does it, does it have a picture? Okay, so here's what it looks like. So my plan for this, because he also heard me talk about, I hate toting this five gallon buckets of water, probably all summer last year. Anyway, you, it is electrical, but the cord is very long. So my rain barrel has a screw um, screen on top. So I can just unscrew the screws, slide this down in. You hook a hose to it, obviously, um, and you hook it to electrical power, but the cord's long enough to come up and out of the rain barrel. And then you can plug it in when you want to go ahead and have pressure in your hose or enough pressure in your hose to water your garden. So I thought it was just like a super great thing. My son works for a coral propagation company and they have a lot of saltwater aquariums and they're pumping water here and pumping water there. So he knows a lot about pumps. So yay, thank you, Benny. All right, Benjamin. Actually, he goes by Ben now. So what are we going to do today? Y'all, I've thought long and hard and there may be another video on Saturday. Um, it just depends on how tired I get. It depends on how long the cat sleeps. You know, seriously, I have a um, service call for my RO reverse osmosis system and water softener today, um, somewhere between 11 and one, which is super specific, don't you think? No, that, that's fine, it's a two hour window. So I wanna get something made before then, and then if I have the time, and they're not here for 17 hours. We might make something else, but the video may get too long. So I want to thank you so much, Joanne. She saw this recipe. And even though this isn't strictly a Throwback Thursday recipe, she sent it to me. And it's from Two Peas and Their Pod. I will attach a link to the recipe below. And it is for some lemon rosemary cookies. So one of the things I did when I was trying to decide what all do I want to make today, you know, not only for me, I kind of owe the neighbors a, a gift after waking them up at Darko 30 on Saturday. <laughs> I have a lot of these vintage Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks and they have a really cute recipe for uh, an Easter braid, but you can also take the dough and make it into hopping bunnies. And I'm like, who doesn't like a hopping bunny? So I think that's probably what we will be making next. And the video, if everything goes according to plan, will be up before Easter. And I'll be sure this time to give all the ingredients, y'all. I apologize, I forgot about the flour content on the last. All right, let me see if I can get Frankie to go take a nap in his napping spot disinfect the counter and then I'll bring you back and we'll get started making these lemon they're shortbread lemon rosemary Mary cookies all right stay tuned right, y'all we're gonna try a little different angle so um, for this it does call for using an electric mixer I'm sure a hand mixer would work fine the first thing we are going to do yes I have it hanging up is I have measured out two cups of all-purpose flour and I just kind of whisk it up. To that, we are going to add, uh, bait for it, a teaspoon and a half of lemon zest and a teaspoon of minced fresh rosemary. That is hard to say. So, I don't have rosemary yet. <laughs> I will, but I want to show y'all. This is what freeze-dried rosemary looks like. And I know not everybody has a freeze dryer, but if you're dehydrating your herbs and you're not impressed with the flavor, shall we say, if you know someone who has a freeze dryer who would be willing to do like a big batch for you, it smells just as if you freshly picked it when you cook with it and the flavor is so much more intense. So, 
Uh, to this also, we need a quarter teaspoon of salt. So I have this all in, all pre-measured. I know y'all don't faint. And it says to combine those well. So I'm thinking they want to make sure because lemon zest is moist and it kind of has a tendency to stick together that you don't get a cookie where you're like, well, that was fuckery. So I used a fresh lemon and um, it was pretty good, pretty good sized lemon. And I pretty much zested the whole thing to get that amount. Oh, y'all smells good already. So we're gonna set this aside and this is a dough that has to chill. So these cookies also, let me tell you, they store well um, in an air tight container, you do want to keep them sealed up for a week or they uh, freeze also very well. Almost any shortbread cookie will freeze very well. So if you need to buy yourself some time and you're the person responsible for Easter dinner, we might be having a throwback Easter dinner this year. Uh, this might be a recipe that you want to use and it gives you time in between while you're waiting for the dough to chill to kind of clean up behind yourself and do a kitchen reset. All right. So, in the bowl of a standard mixer, we are going to beat, I'm sorry y'all, one cup or two sticks of unsalted butter at room temperature, and we're going to add three quarter cup of powdered sugar. So let me say something about the powdered sugar before we start. I am, because I bought it, going to use the Swerve, which is erythritol. Erythritol in large amounts, Look, <clears throat> pardon me, let's say you're sweetening your iced tea and you like a Southern sweet tea all the way through the day, because I drink a lot of liquid. With erythritol, it could raise your blood pressure. It kind of scared me because I don't want to have more of a blood pressure problem than I already do. But I think only three quarters of a cup in a whole batch of cookies, I think is gonna be okay. And I'm not gonna eat all these cookies, part of them are for gifting, and the person I'm gifting to does not eat any table sugar. So let's go ahead and put our two sticks of butter to start. Ooh, that is soft. So y'all still having the crazy weather? I tell you what, it was nice yesterday. It was sunny and it got up in the 60s. Today is raining, which is fine. We need the rain, uh, like high in the 50s. So we had a very early, um, just kidding, moment from old man winter that said, okay, I'm gonna leave town early. And he came right back. <laughs> so. All right, guys, I know you know how to mix things. I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the powdered sugar and get this combined um, for about three minutes and spare y'all your ears. So again, two sticks of butter, three quarters cup of powdered sugar or powdered sugar substitute, beat for two minutes. Hey okay, y'all, this is what our mixture looks like. Just a nice creamy butter mixture with the sugar, no powdered sugar stuck to the bottom. I did have to scrape the bowl down several times and it says three minutes. I think once I said two, but I'm in three. <laughs> Sorry about that y'all. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to add one teaspoon fresh lemon juice. So I just squeezed that and a teaspoon of vanilla. I suppose you could add lemon extract. That's not what it calls for. And in case I didn't make this real clear, this is not, the original recipe is not a sugar-free recipe. I'm choosing to substitute. All right. So now we're going to gradually add in our pre-measured flour, rosemary, and lemon peel concoction. And it says mix until just combined. So this is going to be a thick dough and we're going to form it into a disc and as pretty much any shortbread cookie it has to be refrigerated for at least an hour. So all right let me get the rest of this incorporated then we'll pull the dough show you what it looks like 
and we'll get it wrapped in the fridge and I'll clean up my mess in case the, the repair guy comes early or the service man comes early. Stay tuned. Well, let's take a look at our dough. It is beautifully combined. Now let me just share my experience. It could largely be due to the low humidity in my house. We had a no burn advisory yesterday because the humidity was so very low and the heat's been running so the house is pretty dry that oops that could be part of it so let me get this off and what we're going to do is we are just going to put this out and i just washed my hands onto you could use um saran wrap i like black press and seal it's my particular pick, but let me show you kind of the consistency. So it's soft, but it's not sticky. I don't see any dry areas. So we're going to kind of shape it into a disc. Why a disc? You could do a rectangle. You could do a square. It's just you want it in a pretty even thickness so that it chills evenly. That's the point of shaping it into a disc because our eyes will try to make it symmetrical or our brains not our eyes okay this looks very good it's got the little pieces of rosemary and you can see the little bits of lemon peel isn't that beautiful can you tell i'm excited about it? <laughs> i haven't had any treats for a while okay so into the fridge for at least an hour. Just prior to the end of that hour, I will go ahead and preheat my oven to 325. Now, this is a rolled out cookie, so I have to find some cookie cutters. I have some round ones, I guess we could call them Easter eggs. Oh, I don't think I have any Easter cutouts, but at any rate, we'll get to finishing them up just shortly. I hope you'll stay tuned. All right, all our hour has elapsed. Our dough is really nice and firm, as you see. In the background, you may hear a humming noise. That is my oven coming up to temperature. I'm gonna work on half of the dough at a time. I may decide I need to refrigerate it. So what is this to do? is to roll it out into about a quarter inch thick. So the vintage refrigerator I have really chills things well, <laughs> really well. And a couple of you have asked about this um, rolling pin. This was actually a gift to me. Um, from my sweet neighbor. I have several different rolling pins and I use different things for different jobs. <laughs> this one doesn't stick, but it was a gift purchased out of state, so I can't blink it, but I'm sure you can find something similar on Amazon. I just don't want to recommend something that I have never tried. Well, let me keep on the struggle bus and then Sorry about the oven saying it's ready. I have this bin of cookie cutters that has every size imaginable. And I'm like, you know what? These will be just fine. So let me get this rolled out. I will cut some out, bring you back to talk about baking instructions. Y'all, let me tell you, this dough handles beautifully. I think I might have let it get a little bit too chilly. One of the things about my 1951 Filco is it's always been a super efficient refrigerator. I may also have left it a little longer than an hour. So I'm glad I didn't put that back in the fridge. Let's see if we can get a dozen and get those into the oven. So what the directions say, it says for the baking sheet, um, sorry. It just says prepared, doesn't say how to prepare it. <laughs> I'm using a silk hat. You could use parchment paper. Um, I suppose you could even butter or spray it. 
Oh, I'm sorry. It does say parchment paper or silk hat. Okay, well, great minds think alike, right? Get this last one out. Now, I probably will pop this. As you see, it's getting soft already. I probably will pop this back in the fridge because now it's going to stick a little bit. But let's get our number 12 one out. And they are very pretty. Very nice. What do you think, guys? Don't they look delish? So into the preheated oven, 10 to 12 minutes. I'll bring you back to let you know how long it took, and we'll get our next batch ready. All of our cookies are finished. I did want to share a couple things with you. It could be because I used the Swerve um, artificial powdered sugar. These took way longer for me, and my oven's very efficient, than the uh, 10 to 12 that it said. Mine took more like 16 to 20, and I don't think that mine are too thick. So you want them lightly browned at the edges, quarter inch thick, it smells so good in here. So let's try a pretty one because I usually eat the ugly ones, all right? Mm. Ooh. Lemon is delicious, refreshing. This is not a sweet cookie. And again, it might be different if you use regular powdered sugar it very much puts me in the mind of a, a a tea time cake. Very, very good. Personally, I would like quadruple the rosemary. <laughs> I love rosemary. Let's try a bite with some visual spots of green. Very subtle. So I would say if you love rosemary, you might want to consider upping it. Lemon-wise, it's just about right. So, I've been debating this morning as I've been filming and doing some chores, what I wanna bring you for Saturday. And I have a couple cute ideas. It will be a cooking video. It will be something that if you have stock on hand, you'll be fine with. I'm not gonna do anything super exotic. So, Maybe you can even add a dish on Saturday for your Sunday Easter dinner. All right, guys, I plan to see you on Saturday, Lord willing, and <laughs> the house doesn't blow away. We're under a 45 mile an hour wind advisory. I just hope my chickens don't catch air and end up in the next town over. I'm sure they won't. All right, guys, I will see you then on Saturday, but until then, prepare for Easter, be healthy, be well, be blessed, and take care.